In this video we're going to have a look at the fetch execute cycle to around about the level that we'll need for the IGCSE in computer science um, and pretty much every other GCSE that I've seen apart from some GCSEs require you to know a little bit more uh, assembly language um, and the IGCSE doesn't. So the fetch execute cycle is the cycle that a processor goes through to complete one instruction. So for example let's say that I move my mouse pointer which is here over here then that will be made up of lots and lots of different instructions firstly the CPU will have to tell the monitor to instead of lighting these pixels in the shape of a mouse pointer to light these pixels instead and then these pixels then these pixels also it will need to tell the uh, software that controls the mouse pointer to take the information of the hardware and basically there are lots and lots of instructions that go on all the time even when it seems like your computer isn't doing anything it is going through lots and lots of data and processing it so the fetch, the fetch execute cycle is one cycle of a single part of the data being executed so let's have a look at the different parts of the CPU that we need to understand for the fetch execute cycle so here we've got the program counter which is what we call a register. All of these are called registers. They are small little pieces of data in the CPU. They're kind of little holding places. If you want to put some data in there, they can hold very, very small pieces of data, and each of them has a specific job to do. The one that we're missing out on this example is called the index register. That's the IX. The index register is used to work with the MAR um, which is the address register to change the addresses of where things are it's kind of used as sort of an array so that we can increment the address that we're looking at uh, using the data in there but we're not going to look at the index register for this example but it is there and it's usually called IX so the first one PC is program counter that keeps the number of the instruction that you're on at the moment so at the start it will be 1 and if we've got 5 instructions then it will end on a 5 and then it will go back. The MAR is the memory address register. That stores the address that we're currently looking at in RAM. This big box here represents our RAM. In this RAM we've got 32 individual addresses. These numbers here represent the number of the address. These numbers, let's say we're working on this box here, that number would go into the memory address register. The current instruction register holds the instruction that we're on at the moment. So it holds the information that's in this box. So we might have an instruction that says load um, the data that is in box 11 or address 11. The 11 will go in here and any data that is in there will go into the current instruction register. The memory data register is a temporary holding area. It's sometimes called the memory buffer register. It just holds things on their way to the current instruction register. So let's say we fetch the instruction from 14 here. It will go here and then it'll move across to the current instruction register. This one here, ACC, is the accumulator. What that does is it keeps track of any numbers that we are adding up or subtracting or any amount of mathematics that's going on in here. These the incrementing or the decrementing numbers get stored in here. We've also got another little box that we're going to add which is called, let's draw this out here, it's called the ALU. The ALU is a tiny little part of the CPU and yet it's the only part that can actually work things out. So let's say that you have got a calculation that you want to do the only thing that can work something out is the ALU. So any calculations that you need to do need to go across to this arithmetic logic unit before they can go on their way to wherever they're going. So let's say we're doing 5 plus 5. This thing here will add 5 and 5. No other place can do it. Also on a much more simple level, every time the program counter goes up by 1, the program counter itself doesn't know how to add 1 because it's just a holding area, it's just a register. So it has to send it to the ALU so that it can figure it out. Right, let's see how some sample instructions work. So we've got an in, uh, four instructions here 
written in kind of a pseudo instruction set. What I mean by that is each CPU has its own instruction set and you can write the instructions like this. Um, this is just sort of a sample, it's not specific to any CPU, it's just to show you how it works. So this is an extremely simple programming language, a low level programming language, language and what it means is, this one here says load the number 4. It's a number because we've got a hash in front of it. We store it in address 14, so here. Then we load the number 6, we store it in the address 15. Okay. So when we when we load this program into RAM, it will take up the first few boxes here. So let's say that load address four, uh, sorry, load number four is going to go into this first box here. So when we run our program, which is here, it gets all loaded up into RAM, so it's now ready to go to the CPU and get figured out. So when it gets stored in RAM, it gets stored in number format. Okay, <clears throat> this thing here, which is called the op code it will be represented as numbers. It wouldn't be represented as letters because obviously the computer doesn't understand letters. To be able to understand letters, it, it connects them to the ASCII table, but in RAM, it just stores them as numbers. So let's say that the load in this specific uh, CPU that I'm using is gonna be represented by the number five, okay? Each instruction will have its own number <coughs> attached to it. So for example, add might be nine, Multiply might be eight, subtract might be seven, okay, loading something might be five. These are just sort of, this is an arbitrary number at the moment. So five, four. So what that means is we're going to load the number four. Then we're going to store it in 14. Let's just say for this example that the store instruction has the identifier two. So we're going to store it in 14. At the moment, just to keep this simple, we're not in in this in these boxes. <clears throat> we are not um, showing which one is a number and which one is an address. We're assuming that it's going to know that already. Uh, because at GCSE level, we have to leave out a little bit of detail. Otherwise, it gets extremely complicated extremely quickly. So next, we're going to load 6. So we're going to load the number 6. Okay. And we're going to store that into 15. And our store, we said, was there. So our program is now loaded into RAM and it's ready to go on its way to the CPU and the fetch execute cycle will occur. So <clears throat> the first thing that's going to happen is our program counter is going to contain the number one because we are on instruction one. This is the first instruction of our four instructions of our program. After the program counter has the number one, it gets copied across to the memory address register. The reason is that since we're on the first program, the first instruction must be located in address one. So the memory address register won't always contain, as we'll see in a second, the um, address of the, the same number as the program counter, but for the first instruction it will, because it doesn't know where else to look. So we're assuming that it's gonna be, our first instruction is stored there. So, we go across the address bus here to this address. The address bus is a little metal line in your CPU that carries address details. It carries the one, two, three, four. The data bus is the metal line across which the data that's in here will travel across. The control bus coordinates all of these things together so that they all know what they're doing. So basically if we're doing a read instruction or we're doing a write instruction or we're copying something over from one place to another, the control bus will make sure that everything knows what we're currently doing. Otherwise things can get out of sync and they won't know what's going on. So we'll leave that for the moment. The address bus contains the address, it goes across and it sees that the data that we're looking at is five. Okay? So the data is five. What it means by data is the instruction. Okay, the instruction is a load instruction and it's five. This then gets copied across because that's only a temporary holding area to the current instruction register. Now we know that our current instruction is a loading instruction. When we load something, it means put it in the accumulator. The accumulator is the thing that collects the data, okay? 
So we are collecting this here, and so 4 goes into the accumulator. We've done this now. We can cross this out. That was one CPU instruction cycle. Okay? So, what happens now is the program counter goes up by 1. The program counter is 2 because we are now on our second instruction. The memory address register gets the address of the next instruction from whatever was in the first box. Okay? So it might be that, and we'll look at this in a second because it will happen here, it might be that um, this box, this first register, the instruction in this first register told us to go to 23. Yeah, and therefore that would be 23, but it's not. We're just going straight along to number 2 here in a very simplified example. So the next address we're looking at is 2. That's gone across the address bus, and it's found out that we have the number 2, which is a store instruction. So our store instruction will go into the memory data or the memory buffer register, and then it will get co uh, copied across to the current instruction register. So our current instruction is a store instruction. What do we want to do? We want to store whatever is in the accumulator in address 14. Okay? So now, from the accumulator, our number 4 goes into address 14. Simple. Now we go to our third instruction. As I mentioned earlier, the program counter doesn't know how to add numbers. So what it actually does is it sends the two across there, it instructs it to add one to it, and it will send it back here, and it will go to three. However, that's a little bit more detail than you need. You just need to know that it increments. So, um, sorry, before that happens, obviously, our address register here would have a 14 in it. Okay, because to be able to send that over to address 14 in the memory address register we'd have 14 because we're accessing it. The memory address register holds the address that we are currently working on. Okay, now we are over, done that one, we're going over to address 3. So the memory address register is going to contain 3. The current instruction here is 5 because it's a load instruction again. I said that in my specific example, the load is 5. Okay, As I said, this is called an instruction set of a CPU. It will have loads of numbers and next to them what those numbers do. So for example, 4 might be add, 5 might be subtract, uh, for uh, etc. We're having 5 as a load. So in here, we've got 5 and that gets put across to the current instruction register. Let me delete that because that's just going to get confusing. Uh, that gets put across to the current instruction register, which is also a 5. So the current instruction that we're on is a load instruction. Okay, again, we're loading 6 into the accumulator. We don't put a 10 here because we're not adding them onto each other. The accumulator can only add things if it talks to the ALU. It's not at this point. We just want to load in a 6. So in the accumulator goes a 6. The accumulator holds anything after a load instruction, unless it's been told to store it in the index register. Okay, But in our simplified version here, it's not going to do that. So that was an instruction again. So that was a whole instruction, fetching that over to there, and fetching the um, putting the 6 in the accumulator there. That was an instruction. So now we're moving on. To our final instruction. 215, okay, we're in address number 4 at the minute. Oops, okay, so we're in address 4. The 2 here is going to come across to our memory data register, which is then going to be copied into our current instruction, okay. And then we're looking at address 15. So we're looking now at address 15. Whatever's in the accumulator is now going to travel over the, through the data bus because it's not an address, it's data, to address 15, which is here. 
So then we've got a 6 there. Okay? That was an extremely simplified version of how the fetch execute cycle works. Basically, the key to getting the marks in the exam is understanding two things. Firstly, you need to know what each of these does. Because you might be asked in the exam, tell me a register. Give me two registers. You can say current instruction register, memory address register. Tell me what they do. PC program counter says what instruction we're on. Memory address register stores the address we're working on. Current instruction register stores the current instruction. Memory data register, that stores the instruction when it's on its way to the current instruction register. And finally, well, not, not, not finally, but in the accumulator stores the number that's been loaded or the data that's been loaded in. The ALU is the arithmetic logic unit that does the calculations. And if in your specification, if in your syllabus and your GCSE, you've got an index register, then that stores numbers to be used uh, to find specific addresses. Okay, that's one thing you need to know. And secondly, you need to know the order that this happens. So remember, the program counter has the address. It gets copied over to the memory address register. The whatever's in the memory address register gets copied over temporarily to the MDR. And then it goes over to the CIR. The value, once we've, something might also go across to the accumulator if that's what it wants to do. If that's what the specific instruction is, it might not be. And then the program counter gets incremented and we move on to the next instruction. Okay? All of these are done by signals which are sent through the control bus, which controls and coordinates everything that happens. So if you remember that information, then you are pretty much covered for any possible questions in the exam.